Woo! Welcome back to Keep On Creating. I am Mike and I am blurred. And I'm unblurred. <laughs> Welcome back to Keep On Creating. I'm Mike and today we're going to be jumping back into Affinity Designer creating simple and powerful graphics. But before we go and jump into all that, make sure to hit that subscribe button located somewhere in this regional area and smash the like button. If you really want to support this channel, make sure to watch this video all the way to the end. It really helps support the channel and get it out there. So today, what we, as I said, we're going to be doing, we are going to be creating some easy graphics that are pretty strong and powerful. For sometimes you just want something really simple that can work on a hat, it can work on a garment of any sort, sort. so it can be a hoodie, it can be a t-shirt, it can even work on your website or anything you want to create, just have something simple and clean and that's what we're going to be doing today, just a simple graphic, easy to follow, in Affinity Designer, let's do this. And the first thing we're going to do is get a new artboard going here. So let's just go up to Affinity Designer across the file, click on that and then select this new option here so we can create a new artboard. Mine is 500 by 500 millimeters and 300 dpi. Not that that matters because if you've seen some of the previous videos you know that Vector does not have a DPI. So we're going to click create and we're going to be presented with this nice white board right here. So the first thing I want to do is change this white board to a black background because let's just start working on a, a dark background for this, this one here. So I'm going to change this white to a black and take that stroke off there. So I'm just going to basically take off this fill by clicking on this little icon over here and just flip it over with that little flipping tool right there, the flipping tool. And we're going to end up with a black fill. Now I'm going to push M and I'm going to use this rectangle tool right here. Then I'm going to go right to the corner here and just make our entire background nice and dark. And you can see it says rectangle up here. I'm just going to lock that now. So I click on this little padlock right here. Boom. And now that is locked. So now we can't click on it anymore. So you can't click on it. Okay. Let's take this fill over here and make that white. So I'm going to click on that. And that is now white. And let's get some text on here. So I'm going to hit T to get our text tool up. And I'm going to click on the artboard. And let's type in keep on creating all in caps. And for some reason it hasn't gone white, so I'm gonna make that white. So let's just make that nice and big. Click and drag, make it big, make it big. Okay, now the font for this, let's go with a nice good striking font. So up to your font options up here. I'm gonna click on that and we're gonna go for Bebus. So if you haven't got Bebus on your system, then use Impact. It's a very similar font to this one. So if you haven't got Bebus, look for Impact. Okay, so I've made mine nice and big. I'm gonna hold down Alt and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag, I'll down Shift, might as well keep it in line and drop it over there. So release. And now I'm gonna double click this and write in some more text. I'm gonna say, do not fade. Okay, I'm going to Alt drag this again. So I'm gonna click Alt and drag off to the side of here. Let's make some more text, E, S, T, B. Probably a good idea to get your text what you want to put on here first and I'm going to alt drag and click and drag all the way to the side by holding shift to keep it a nice straight line and let's type in 2020 2020 so those are the text elements that I'm basically wanting so let's scale down this one here so I'm clicking on that getting my move tool which is this tool right here and I'm just going to drag that down somewhere like about there drag these select both of these ones and i hold shift now and drag these because if you don't hold shift it's a bit of a funny one with if an designer if it's singular like this as an one text element and you can just drag it up and down but if you've got two selected and you just try to drag there without holding shift it warps it so you got to hold shift when you've got more than two selected and i'm going to make that really nice and small that small hold shift and just drag it off to the side drag this one off to the side and we got that there okay so that's our first little element there. I'm just gonna leave these as text for now. I know I normally convert this straight away, but let's just leave those for text at this point in time. We can come back and change them later. I am now gonna draw some, let's draw some lines. So I'm gonna zoom in here. 
I'm gonna hit P and P brings up our pen tool, which is uh, this tool right over here. So it says pen tool. So that's what we're looking for. Now I'm gonna flip these around. Hopefully it'll work this time. So I'm gonna take this fill and put it as my stroke. So I'm gonna flip that around. I'm gonna click over here. I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna click somewhere about like over here. And I'm just gonna push V and deselect. Yeah, so it has actually used that. Now what I'm gonna do is go up to my stroke layer and you can see it currently says 0.2. Let's just make that two for now. So it's nice and thick. And let's just drag it somewhere where we want it. So I'm gonna want it like just a little bit within there-ish. Okay, so let's just zoom into this corner over here. So I'm gonna click and hold spacebar. Come on, and zoom in. So you can see right now, I'm gonna want this to be quite sharp. It's a very sharp font, and this line over here is not sharp. See, it's got that like rounded edge to it. If we click on that, head up to your stroke over here and drop down to, let's go to this cap over here. So it says square cap, click on that, and you can see it gives us a nice a square cap. That's what we're looking for, nice sharp edges. Watch out. Let's click on that, okay, that line. I'm gonna hold down Alt and Shift. I'm gonna click and drag, and I'm just gonna drop it somewhere around a bit there. So just release everything at the same time. And then go Command J. And what Command J does, it basically duplicates it at that exact same distance, the same line, everything the same, just down one. Now I'm gonna actually hold down Command J and you'll see it'll start duplicating a whole bunch of them all the way down to the bottom where we want it. So just hold it down, Command J. And yeah, that's about good. That's about cool. You can always see that it actually looks like those when the old school when we had to tune our screens and collaborate them to calibrate them. Not calibrate, calibrate them. Where we had to see if it was white, whether it was black, whether it was gray. That's kind of like what that looks like right now. That actually looks pretty cool. Okay, so enough of that. What we want to do is let's see what we're gonna do next. Let's bring okay. I'm gonna bring this do not fade. Let's, okay, I was gonna scale it down, but let's leave it as it is. Just bring up our text palette. So I'm gonna go Command T, okay? Now where that would be, if you can't find it, go up to View, is it in here? Or go to Text, sorry, and drop down to Character, Show Character, so that's where it is there, Command T. Then what I'm gonna do is, you see over here where it says Tracking, I'm gonna basically hover over that and here's a cool trick. If you just hover over that and you've got a rolling wheel mouse like this guy over here, I'm just gonna hover over it and I'm gonna let it rip. And you can see what it's doing. It's basically expanding that out just nice and far apart. So that's what tracking does. It gives that space between the letters and it makes it a bit more further apart. And that's what I'm looking for here. Because it's quite condensed, let's just make it nice and big. Okay, so we've got that bit there done. I am going to, start drawing a, let's get our rectangle tool up again. So M, which is this tool over here, remember? And let's draw a rectangle around this ESTB over here, somewhere like there. So let's take the snapping off, because it keeps on snapping to the edge. And let's draw it somewhere around about there-ish. Let's flip this around. Okay, so I'm gonna take that stroke and I'm gonna put it as the fill. You go, whoo, I think you can use Shift X. That does the same thing. So Shift X is a quick key for that one and make sure that this block is behind our text. So we're just gonna go up to a layer, and wow, look at all those curves. Let's just sort of the curves first, all these lines. So all the, all the curves, you can see them going all the way down just to above that text over here, so the 2020 text. I'm gonna hold Shift, and I'm gonna make sure I select all of them. So I've selected the top one, held Shift, and selected the bottom one. I'm just gonna go Command G, to group all of them. So it just makes them all nice and neat and tidy so we can actually see in our group where everything is there. I'm just gonna close this character window here, get that out of the way. So with that rectangle, as I was saying, we want that to be under the ESTB and the 2020. So I'm gonna click and drag, oops, I'm gonna click, click off. Let's just drag this all the way underneath the ESTB and the 2020. Okay, just drop it there and I'm gonna make the ESTB and the 2020 black. So I've selected both of them and I'm going to make sure my fill is selected and click on the black and that makes that black. Now I'm gonna alt drag this block over here, this rectangle that we just made, click and drag 
and it should be now behind everything. So that's that. You can actually see now my 2020, my ESTB are not in line. So if I just select all of those elements, and when I go right up here with all those elements selected, and you can see it says align middle. I would presume you think they should say horizontal, but middle. So we're gonna click on that and you can see that 2020 just went cook and basically came into the shape where it wanted to be or I wanted it to be. So I'm gonna select those, I'm gonna select all of that there, just holding shift while selecting everything. So holding shift with my move tool, select all of those elements. I'm now gonna hold shift and scale down because I want them a bit smaller, somewhere like there. Don't want them too imposing on everything. Select those two elements, hold shift, drag that out to the side. And I would like them to be centralized in this do not fade. So I'm gonna select all of those elements again, and I'm going to actually now do that align middle again. So you can see how it's all nice in the middle. Now I do want them to be perfectly centered. Well, I want the do not fade to be perfect centered in between those two blocks. So easy way to do that is I'm gonna select those blocks on this side, hold shift, select the blocks on this side, and I'm gonna make them a group. So command G, okay? Now I can select everything here basically and just go just align center over here i was going to say align vertically align center click on there and you can see how everything's just going phew. so now this do not fade is centralized between the keep on creating section those lines and the 2020 so it's perfectly in the middle perfectly all right all right so what we're going to do now is i know there isn't a great cut tool in this so we are just going to draw this with a pen so i'm going to hit p to get our pen tool back up and i'm basically going to draw a 90 degree corner so obviously i've got my white stroke over here and i'm going to click in here so somewhere around about there click hold shift click hold shift and go click so it just goes dun, dun, nice 90 degree line so what I'm gonna do now is just take this, I'm gonna hold down Alt, so I've selected that with my move tool. So I've quickly gone V and got this tool over here. Okay, that's your move tool. Click on this, hold down Shift and Alt, click and drag, drag all the way to the other side. And let's just flip that over quickly. There's a quick flip command up here. So you can see over there, it says flip horizontal and it flips it horizontal. Okay, let's bring it in here. And obviously, once again, we just want that perfectly aligned. So if you just select basically those two again, so select your two elements you've just drawn, group them together, select everything, and click on that align a middle or align center of here. So go and you can see it just went cook and just aligned it. Okay. So now at this point, I'm looking at this and you can see the lines are actually competing quite a bit with the text. Yes, we can just go ahead and put a key line around that text. But before we do that, what I actually wanna show you is if we click on this text here, let's select all well, these lines here, not text. If we select there as the lines and we select these lines here we've drawn. So that group of bunch of lines that we've drawn done there. And now I'm gonna head over to stroke and let's, I know it says zero at the moment because it's classified in a group, but it was two. So let's just type in two there to make sure we're all on the same page. Now with a two, two stroke line, if you watch it there, and if I say one stroke, hit enter, see how much less competing that is already, how much easier that is in the eye. And you can see the difference between the two there, which looks really good. Now, if we now go ahead and select that text, so if I can select the text and not the stroke, uh, the text needs to be above everything. So I'm gonna click on do not fade, I'm gonna click on this keep on creating and hold shift while selecting both of them, click and drag them right to the top. Okay, drop them there. Now I can select that, yep. So what I wanna do is let's have this a black fill with a white key line and Quick way to do that, my stroke is showing at the moment, so I'm just gonna click on this here and I'm gonna flip them over. So you can see now I've got a white stroke with a black fill. And obviously I want that to be on the outside. Let's see if this works in Affinity Designer. If I go here and say align stroke to outside and it does actually work. So if I now say one point there, now what is what that's basically done, instead of it lining on the inside of this stroke over here, so you can see that's the inside and this is the outside. So if it was left normally, which is kind of this one aligned to the center, you can see how it encroaches in on those letters. We want it to be on the outside of those letters. So I'm just gonna click on the outside, so the outside stroke there. And yes, you guessed it, it has got round corners here on the outside. We want them to be sharp. So if we click on a mitre join, 
and you can see it gives us that sharp sharp edge that's what we're looking for there okay so let's make a duplicate of this to further separate this i mean it's really nice and clean at the moment i think in fact this was of the if i was doing this for an embroidery i would keep it clean like that but if we want to do this as a print then i'm going to go over to my layers i'm going to make a copy of this one so we could just go copy command c or you can go up to edit copy and then edit paste okay and you can see it's given us two versions over here i'm going to select this bottom version and i'm going to take that stroke off so the white part of it this part over here let's take it off click on this little button over here or that little button right over there a little icon and click that off what we can do is we can either drag it we can either use our keyboard and go tick, 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 and just keep on tapping it to the side um yeah that's cool and we could even bring it down if we wanted so it's like more of your 45 drop i'm not sure if i want the 45 drop or not i'm not not quite sure i'm just gonna click and drag let's just click that one and drag it off to the side oops let's have a look yeah well, that's cool so what i've actually done is i've tried to in here you can see it's got those little lines over there just take them a little bit further and just knock them out of most of the place so it doesn't it just is not much competing so i've taken out those little lines in between all these little areas in between the letters and it just makes it really nice and clean and that is basically done i like it the last thing you've got to remember to do before you hand this over select everything command enter make sure everything is converted to outline so you can see over here it says groups well it did not say groups a second ago it said aaa and aaa reminds you that it's text still convert it to curves or lines or whatever you want to call it because now you can just take this and you can basically hand it over to whatever you want to do but that is a simple logo classic and that's how easy it is to create a simple but striking graphic with a few little clicks here and clicks there, some throwing some text, make the text use that tracking trick where you make the text a little bit more gappy in between those letters. And what you end up with is something pretty cool and simple yet striking. Social media links are available in the description below. If you want to send me a DM of what you've been creating, it'll be good to see. I enjoy seeing what you guys are actually doing with these tutorials. And with all of that said, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out here.